Aquarius! Hi guys! I hope that you guys are excited for today's reading, as I definitely am. Okay, this is about um, those of you that are definitely feeling like the black sheep or the white sheep in your family. Um, and it's for my Aquarians who have specifically awakened or are connecting or are in the process of being able to connect and awaken other fractals of self that are leading lives in other planetary star systems as like Pleiadians, Arcturians, Sirens, Lyrans, whatever that may be, you know, some, some kind of, um, um extraterrestrial connection that you guys have a lot of you are contactees or you can just kind of um entangle quantumly with these higher versions of self if you will that are existing in you know higher dimensions and this is really about your family okay and you being able to pull forward your generational lineage in the third dimension through your own healing journey and a lot of you is i'm hearing like you have been hand selected or you have been chosen to break this cycle and really it's about people feeling a shame for being different okay in your ancestral lineage and you're also pulling forward your starseed lineages through this healing journey that you're going through as well okay a lot of you have descended onto earth to be able to heal these old ancestral starseed lineage wounds and also earth wounds okay now this is about your family that's kind of panicking during this time because you're shining the light that they've tried so hard to dim and the reason i'm talking about family some of you this is like soul family okay it doesn't have to be your immediate family and um, this could be like friends it could be lovers it just could be people that you've had these soul contracts with um that are kind of assisting you in your own kind of awakening to your own divinity right and some of you are break to your were pushed to your breaking point or there was like a final straw that hit the camel's back that kind of led you to have that venus and aquarius type of energy where it's like i have to do what's best for me i can't keep saying yes to others at the expense of saying no to myself or i can't keep making myself small to try to fit in in some ways because i'm not even made to fit in you know i'm seeing somebody like trying to you know like the children that have like they have like a square shape and then they have like a um an oval and they try to put it in through the square but it's like not fitting or they try to put like an oval through a square and it's like not fitting like a heart through a, a star it's like it's just the wrong shape you know it's just like people are trying to shape you to be someone that you're not in some way or get you to be somebody that you're not and um and it's really because i feel like your ambition actually um, I'm hearing frightens others. There could be something about like your ambition makes others uncomfortable. All right, that's who I'm talking to. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you how this started. So, um, I want to say like probably, probably uh, about a week ago, I was in the gym and I've always seen this Nautilus sign in the weights room anyway because it's like one of the brands. So I'll go ahead and show you this Nautilus sign. I've always seen it, right? And it's a sea creature for those of you that don't know. And the reason why this day specifically it caught my attention was because when I looked out the window, uh, there was like a garbage collection that was going on and it had Zeus on it. And Zeus, literally backwards, it literally said Zeus. And I was like, okay, Jupiter energy. So some kind of wisdom has been gained through an experience right and it had a very similar nautilus symbol but it was like diverted so i was like there's a weird like parallel mirror that's kind of going on it's like a parallel reality it's kind of reminding me of like truman energy where something's being mirrored in a weird way so anyway i went to go ahead and look up the nautilus and i already had little mermaid vibes that i was going to do for you guys anyway and i was like okay this i see where this is going and here we are now so i'm going to go ahead and tell you everything that i found out about this so the nautilus is a symbol that reminds you to diversify your focus investments in more than one goal this spirit animal reminds you not to limit yourself with your thoughts the nautilus meaning also represents creativity and innovation when facing your opponents similarly learn to avoid people and friends that wish ill on you okay so any relationships that limit you in any kind of way soul family real family that you still have soul contracts with anyway um those relationships are fracturing during this time and it says grow and evolve as you learn new things expand your beliefs to fit who you are now and not where you are in life all right or where you have been in life all that has been is something that you're accepting is not all that will be and it's not all that's going to be and the nautilus symbol also advises you to devise a plan of escape so keep in mind that not every everything in your life goes according to plan nonetheless if things fail to go your way you don't have to be in despair also like the frog you have your way out in any any situation you have the mental fortitude to keep yourself out of any condition 
now do you guys know the nautilus symbol that i'm talking about if, if it looks familiar in the little mermaid i'll give you a minute to just guess where i try and find it but it's literally oh i'm gonna google it it's literally um a necklace a very specific necklace let me go ahead and Uh, I typed that in so funny that not even Google knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. Ursula's necklace. All right. So if you guys know her necklace, it's literally the Nautilus symbol. It's literally this symbol right here. Let's see if I can just zoom in to show you. But yeah, you guys can look it up anyway, but it's literally this verbatim. That's the Nautilus necklace, okay, that Ursula has. And that's what she uses to capture Ariel's voice, which is the throat chakra and the throat chakra represents your authenticity and your highest expression right and people trying to limit that so the purpose of this necklace was to still Ariel's voice and this um Ursula character did it by bewitching her okay so you may feel like you were bewitched now the reason I really was pointing to family was because in the story of the little mermaid um Ursula is Ariel's paternal aunt okay so this shows family dynamics and she inherited this necklace from Poseidon which is 12th house elements so this could even be like past life contracts that you guys have had um things where you kind of can we'll talk about projection in a little while but it's kind of where you can place rose-colored tinted glasses and you really you know see people for the potential that they may not even see in themselves like looking at a person and situation for what you'd want them to become rather than the reality of them showing you who exactly they are okay and the status of this necklace is now destroyed so again this is something that is no longer holding you back in any way and i feel like that's why people are kind of like shaking in their boots um and the representation of a nautilus necklace is that you can let go okay and you can bounce back quickly after an adverse event um it does represent adverse adversities in real life and these folks may <laughs> um may want to fail in your and may want you to fail in your endeavors and even attempt to take away success from you so stay cautious around people you are suspicious of if you don't want uh if if and if they don't want you to achieve your goals on the other hand catching this spirit animal in the metaphysical realm represents um some kind of success in life it does show that you're going to defeat any kind of like opponents adversities or oppositions and it's almost like ops yeah it's like you're finding that internal balance within the opposites because that's what oppositions create in astrology you know it's almost like friction um and you'll be able to defeat these uh kind of like adversities and overcome them right so the similarities i want to talk about with ariel and your um i'm hearing uriel so archangel uriel could be coming in right now um but ursula were both rebels in nature and actually they both went against king triton in some way because ariel wanted to see what the human world is about right she wanted to move to the physical realm and ursula also wanted to get back um because she had a lot of animosity for king f towards king triton her brother so both ariel and ursula were seeking an abundant experience outside of themselves which resulted in their emotions emitting a bioelectrical charge into the quantum field around strong feelings of lack despair and desperation right they're both desperately wanting something outside of themselves and um, this resonance caused them to come into alignment right so this is what brought you guys in alignment some of you were again you were created with a specific energy signature that would have you pull forward your generational lineage but it wouldn't come easily right it would come with a lot of resistance and having to learn a lot of lessons along the way and um, because oftentimes you forget why these things have happened right you're god, you're a god sleeping with amnesia you're a deity that kind of dismembers themselves right as they descend onto the third dimensional plane and then they have to remember who they are right so you came into alignment but you had a limited filter perception but it would leave an everlasting imprint on one another so again this is a specific soul contract for a lot of you um but they would both go to great lengths to attain their desires no matter how it impacted those around them so this does represent some kind of like self-serving motive it is on different like frequencies but they still are in resonance right even though it's on different planes of consciousness um so you emanate magnetism right we're all magnets and this is why you attract people places things experiences circumstances that are going to enhance trigger or reinforce um these core belief systems that you have right both of these beings they both believe that they wanted something outside of themselves um and these powerful emotions reinforce 
these experiences right they generate these experiences for us so they were both um really in a contracted state of being now i want to talk about maslow's hierarchy of needs pyramid so these are basically um physiological needs a lot of the time when it comes to human needs and this is a universal just human um psychology so level four is what they were kind of both on which is about esteem uh respect needs especially ursula wanting status recognition strength and freedom and a need to feel important and accomplished right even ariel had tendencies of these and the opposite side of that is like low self-esteem feeling weak feeling un invisible and feeling this lack of freedom which they both had inside of them right it was like inhabiting that being um which put them both in a vulnerable state, right? Both of them were wanting, again, something more outside of themselves. They were feeling both invisible, right? Ursula had to go towards the other half of the ocean, right? She ruled the other half of the sea, but she was there all alone with just her eels to keep her company. Um, and they, she was feeling invisible. So was Ariel. She felt like no one really saw her. No one really understood her. And they were both kind of misunderstood characters there, right? So um, they were a magnet for a parasitic energy exchange, particularly Ariel, okay? And this is where they're more likely to happen when the organism is, or the human, right, is existing in a contracted state of being. So I'm just explaining what kind of brought in this soul contract and resonance for you guys, especially if you weren't kind of born into this with immediate family and this happened and an energy signature behind a different face of like a lover or a friend, whatever that may be. I'm hearing friend to foe. So some of you, it's that um, foe to friend I was also hearing. Um, and this is about a centrifugal state of life force where, where you're focusing your life force on the world externally, right? Instead of it being in a centripetal state, right? Centripetal state where it's inside. And um, you're now realizing how you can rejuvenate your organism instead of being an energy exchanger that are parasitic in nature and deplete your organism, okay? Um, and that's by being in a mode of desperation, right? Knowing that you are a fragmented piece of source energy and you're everything that you ever really will need, okay? So if there's no enemy within, then the enemy without cannot hurt us. So the soul contract I'm going to talk about is a little bit of con artistry, okay? <laughs> I'm hearing a little bit of con artistry in my life, right? Um, so this involves the confidence of a person before seducing them into giving something up of value. So the value could be attention, time, or favors, or even love. Um, but Ursula does not immediately reveal her true intentions to Ariel. At first, her approach was friendly and Ariel was like a baby, right? Very trusting and innocent. So this could have been where you guys were very naive and that shows the dangers of pro uh, projection. So projection is defined as the process of displaying one's own feelings onto a different person, animal or object. Projection is gluing one's feelings and beliefs onto another. Carl Jung said projections change the world into the replica of one's own unknown face in projection we see what it is that we want to see we believe what it is that we want to believe right rose colored tinted glasses and that often happens when we draw in these experiences in resonance right because level four is a lot about empowerment it's a lot about the solar plexus so if you're pinning in uh, an experience that is of that same color of that same vibrational frequency your color will actually Def, uh, it will reject the color that it is and absorb every other one okay which means that you don't really see it clearly while you're still in resonance with it until you begin to look within right and actually grow apart vibrationally you can actually look at it from a higher perspective so a lot of you understand these contracts now it's like you understand oh like they kind of taught me this about myself they taught me my own worth they taught me my own value by kind of like not giving that to me and realizing that's actually something that I could have given to myself, right? If they can't be proud of me, well, I finally can. If they can't accept me, well, I finally can, you know? It's that type of energy. So again, Ariel wanted to believe that Ursula was looking out for her and she wanted to help attain her exactly what it is that she wanted. Um, and Ursula, on the other hand, kind of rejected her own shadow by deflecting and blaming others right for these circumstances that resulted in her organism operating in a profound state of suffering and she again lacked this internal confidence so she would overcompensate for this lack of internal power by trying to harness control externally right which led her trying to si siphon um ariel's energy so the sea witch was placed um solely on your path okay to apply uh, your free will, to allow you to apply your free will and realize that you don't just have to become a passive recipient of your reality, you can actually become a creator of it, right? This tells you that you don't have to engage with these specific energy signatures any longer, okay? So 
the whole point of this soul contract with this other being is for you to realize that you don't have to change the other they play a very they're very specific energy signature they've played a very specific character in your life and it's not for you to impart anything but for you to be the one that changes realizing that you can't really ever control anything externally but you can control how you want to respond to this so if you keep yourself in these environments are limiting your state of being then you'll kind of stay in the cage that they create for you right and you're now evolving into higher creational states now with ursula the ursula name means little she bear which means um vulnerability to an otherwise ferocious being so again it's like someone that really puts up this kind of front and facade that they are way more powerful but that is really coming from a vulnerable state because all cruelty cru cru all cruelty stems from weakness it all springs from weakness right so this is the consequences of Ursula's own actions because she's a Cecilia, which is a half octopus and half woman um, archetype. So if you guys haven't watched the reading that we did with Homer Simpson and Mr. Burns, that was like the octopus and he was trying to stop um, Homer from like entering into the land, right? Onto the physical realm. And he was able to shapeshift to kind of get away, which is you guys kind of stepping into new roles, right? Um, changing your energetic signature and becoming farther and farther away where you're now in a new, another universe and this person can't touch you. Even if they're still within your close um, proximity, I'm hearing, um, they can't press the buttons that you used to once trigger you, right? It's like you've now come to terms with that and there's no enemy within, so there's no more enemy without, right? The enemy without cannot hurt you. So I feel like these situations, circumstances don't really trigger you as much. I'm seeing like trails um so yeah there's something about like the trail this is left behind for you guys um but octopuses are hostile creatures right they represent trick trickery in the metaphysical realm it represents bad luck and someone that may be trying to prevent you from reaching your goals and it sh is the belief that some people will steer you off course in life by bringing turbulence and chaos okay so um ursula's greed and use of dark magic led to her banishment and dark magic really just stems from self-serving motives and intentions that people have and yeah she was known as a sea witch and she chose to accept that because she was once you know abusing her power so this could be like kind of pluto and capricorn energy where you're doing that fast line or final dance with the devil even if this is psychologically like changing the way that you kind of perceive this past circumstance that could have happened let's talk about ariel she was on a different octave this is about you guys okay so i'm going to talk about it as if it's you so you risk everything to pursue your dreams you long for something far different from what your everyday life has to offer in your rush to materialize your desires you ignore the hazards on your path that others cautioned you about and i feel like this is about spirit guides for a lot of you where you could have even ignored your intuition still the intensity of your emotions know no defeat and you move heaven and earth to have the life that you desire so ariel she bestows uh, the gifts of passion purpose and transformation and with her help you will travel to the places where your dreams await you her obsession had also taken a toll on her emotionally and this shows uh, the song uh, that she sings with a, a whole new not a whole new world but the song that she the one of the most famous songs that she just talks about there um where in the beginning it's full of wonder and enchantment and ultimately it climaxes with a soft end feeling filled with hopelessness and despair so this is about dying hopes of like living life upon the surface that she has right these feelings of desperation and despair are the prime motive behind of Ariel's eventual deal with the sea witch Ursula to become human and experience the world above the surface, okay? So this kind of reminds me of a deal with the devil where Ursula talks about poor unfortunate souls and she basically tries to convince Ariel that she doesn't need her voice, right? She basically says that you don't need authenticity, like you don't need to live life in alignment with your highest expression. Um, she basically tries to say that men upon the surface aren't don't even want women to talk basically type of energy and she says i admit that i've been nasty in the past and um she basically talks about she knows a little magic it's a talent that she's always possessed and um she uses it for miserable and lonely and desperate uh pathetic kind of people okay so um there's that type of energy again where somebody just I always get Archon's energy with Ursula, right? Like they're aware of the manifestation and they're aware of the the nature of this reality, yet they still use it for self-serving motives. So a lot of you, there definitely could have been an Archon in your family or you had a soul contract with an Archon. I kind of get that energy for real. I'm just like kind of piecing that together now. Um, 
But yeah, Ursula commands Ariel to sing and she summons up a pair of hands from her magic cauldron and she basically, again, rips Ariel's voice from her and she places it inside the necklace, silencing her. So this is almost like your family that could have been wanting to silence you for a lot of you, okay? Um, and... Uh, there's like a massive throat chakra awakening that's going on even with the planet right now so this is helping you to mold and create the reality that you want utilizing your own cymatic frequencies um and that come that comes from your vocal box right so a lot of you this is like speaking your truth in some way and co one combined with conscious intent um it's thought to help mold and create a reality that has frequent uh that has the power over ether of space and time right and these vibrations go out and emanate and help you create a reality that's in alignment with your highest expression so this is something that Ursula couldn't do on her own so she seeked an external source so again this could be like family members or people that are trying to siphon your energy in some way um but yeah there's a lot that's kind of going on and let me see what else they want me to mention oh yeah there was a specific saying where your conflicts all the difficult things, the problematic situations in your life are not a chance or hazard. They are actually yours. They're specifically designed for you, specifically by a part of you that loves you more than anything else. The part of you that loves you more than anything else has created roadblocks to lead you to yourself. You are not going in the right direction unless there is something pricking you on the side telling you, look here, this way. That part of you loves you so much that it doesn't want you to lose the chance. It will go to extreme measures to wake you up. It will make you suffer greatly if you don't listen what else can it do that is its purpose so that's literally about these kind of particular soul contracts right where it's like source again is experiencing itself subjectively um to learn more about itself and these different interactions so there's obstacles that will be naturally placed on your path and usually is going to be those closest to you um but there's a specific story that's supposed to play out to help you often awaken to your power a lot of the times um by you know realizing that you don't have to allow these people to overpower you you can actually become empowered by the fact that they try to overpower you it's that type of energy so this is about embracing that right instead of feeling like it's something that you have to brace for i feel like this is something that a lot of you have learned to be able to experience um but in the, even in the face of challenge and adversity Ariel still got her voice back right the authenticity that others have tried to siphon from you and it's left an everlasting imprint right when it comes to imbalance energy exchanges never again will you guys make yourself small to try to fit in that's like the main moral of the story um so yeah you're focusing on self-love where one makes deep changes for the soul's path by removing out of a self-created state of suffering right where the human doesn't actually have to exist in these profound state of sufferings you don't actually have to judge others you can actually be grateful for the lessons that they have imparted upon you even if they are unconscious while doing that you know it's allowed you to learn more about yourself um so yeah this is saying that your authenticity is priceless and you know making yourself small comes at too high of a cost right this is about you guys kind of like learning what it is that you want to do differently this time and then eric and ariel end up birthing um melody right so i feel like this is a new melody right it's about you guys being able to be more in a harmonic state within yourself and enter into, into like a new uh, realm um because ariel and Eric kind of represent the alchemical marriage, the divine masculine and the divine feminine, where the divine feminine is underneath the ocean, right? It's like she is the subconscious mind and Eric is the one in the land. It's like the physical body and you're having that come in union so that your higher self is like seated in your physical vessel and that's what's roaming the earth and you can freely move between the non-physical and the physical realm, right? You guys can move freely to connect with other fractals of self that are leading lives in other planetary star systems, right? Um, and you can also translate i'm hearing like the downloads that you get when it comes to how you need to move accordingly in this realm so there's something around that like you receiving advice from like dimensions beyond what it is that other people can perceive and that leads you to be really misunderstood um but yeah there's something about just realizing that you're not made to fit in right um so that's the type of energy that i get from that and the last thing i wanted to mention Honestly, there's so much that I can talk about, but the last thing I want to mention, which is why I'm putting this reading out now, is because Venus has entered Scorpio, and um, in Scorpio season, this is going to become very, very prominent for you guys, because I did this reading um, in Scorpio, for Scorpio, 
in May this year and that's where we had the new moon in Taurus that's now going to be having its six month mark in the month of November okay so that's where you're going to see something harvest especially around um uh, a new worldview that you guys are going to be adopting um but really when it comes to your fourth house and home and family so something's going to be changing when it comes to your family dynamic some of you are going to be looking at the past a little bit differently when it comes to what you used to provide that emotional foundation for you no longer is like that's completely changing during this time and you're going to be able to relate to your different your past differently that's the type of energy that i was getting with that with that um new moon and taurus that you had back in 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 uh may so with scorpio um I, the energy of that was the dots are connecting you just can't see how the bigger vision is coming together right now trust that everything is in alignment for your greatest good um so again think back to may guys around that new moon in taurus kind of what happened for you what kind of seed did you plant back then because there's a huge transformation where you're about to emerge as a new you that was a scorpio reading and in that astral travel for that reading, I was talking to my brother and something that he said was really unclear at first, but then it became clear. And he said, inspiration for the future. Now check this. He was repeating it while showing me a candle and the wax was like melting on these like 3D book pages of different Disney characters and stories. And um, he pulled out a bunch of like different pop-up art as he was like reading me the story and it was all like scripted. And the stories were Cinderella, which I feel like we've been talking about recently for Aquarius. Also Shrek, which will probably be upcoming. Sleeping Beauty and The Little Mermaid. Okay, and The Little Mermaid was the last one. So again, this is like inspiration for the future for a lot of you. Um, but yeah, candles represent an ending ending a life phase and beginning a better period in our lives. It also shows spiritual guidance and enlightenment as you undergo a major change. And it also shows, again, where you're being led past any difficulties that you faced. In The Little Mermaid, it shows that love conquers all. She yearns for another world, apart from her own, where she can be free from limits of her rigid culture. Her body is underwater, but her heart and mind are on the land with the people. So I feel like, again, a lot of you are leading a double life type of energy. And it really just gives me Truman vibes where he comes into that awakening. Um, but he's still kind of like playing a little character for a while. Um, but there's something about like you really stepping outside of an old mold that people have tried i'm seeing like a wax mold and like somebody breaking free from that cast and this is almost like again your butterfly maybe it's like the cocoon type of energy and you guys emerging as a new transformed version of self but this is really going to activate in november but i really just want to get this out prior um because i feel like you need to hear it now okay just in advance and we'll probably come back around to that um but the reason i'm posting this is because i, I saw the tarot timing cards in my dream back in may and it said may november and october and august were going to be significant it said that important people were going to be coming i feel like this is new guides that you guys are being assigned during this time um so yeah there's a lot that's kind of going on and it says the fears we don't face become our limits the past can shackle our future hindering the freedom to evolve and embrace new opportunities okay so you guys might want to watch that reading i'm not going to go through all of it now um but yeah maybe we'll do another reading on the astral messages if you want me to say that and this but it was really just about um no longer having this guilty conscious and uh realizing that there's some people that you're going to have to be kind of um cutting your cords from during this time in order for you to be able to succeed okay um yeah and i feel like this is some kind of communication that you're going to be receiving from your guides whether you want to or not okay all right so with that being said we're just going to overlay some of this with maybe uh i feel like that was so much <laughs> i could have honestly kept going on like there's a lot more that i cannot say but um if you guys want to hear more about that maybe we'll would we'll do a like a follow-up with this energy we'll put this into another reading uh let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on with this area on asla vibe then we have blessed so again i feel like you guys are understanding that you are truly blessed right especially as you clean up i feel like you're realizing exactly what it is that you need to discard and that is the awakening right awakening is not changing who you are but just discarding everything whom you are not right i feel like you guys are kind of dismissing um anything or anyone that insults your soul during this time okay so let's take a look at 22 
So something wonderful that is unearned and unexpected grace that is unforeseen gift from spirit. So there are moments in life when out of the blue, it seems like everything has been orchestrated by divine intervention. You feel blessed in ways that are difficult to express. It's as if the Red Sea parts in front of you and events come together to banish your troubles easily and naturally. You know deep down you did not deserve any of it, yet here you are. This is one of those times. Let awe and gratitude for all your experiences guide you now. I'm hearing you, you've succeeded in receiving it. Okay, I just got a notification on that. So again, a lot of you were succeeded in receiving this. Now, a lot of you in relationships are going to be moving towards a deepening intimacy of unique and sacred partnerships. Okay, so some of you could be meeting like new soul family members because I'm seeing like the Red Sea parting for you during this time. I feel like we did a love reading on that for you guys where I said this person would part the Red Sea for you. So I'll link that down below. Um, especially if you feel like this is the same kind of energy that's been showing up in certain partnerships where you've had to kind of like feel like you had to change who you were to be accepted. Um... But I feel like a lot of you, this is almost like a guide that's allowing you to see that, you know, you can actually part the Red Sea for yourself. Um, but yeah, this is a union that's going to be blessed by the divine for a lot of you. And it's allowing you to form a better relationship with yourself. Okay. I feel like when it comes to you and your higher self and even like the fracture of yourself that's existing in a higher dimension. And um, with this new development, you will see evidence of grace in your life. So the prosperity message is unexpected windfalls and good fortune coming away now. You're in a phase where any difficulties or obstacles that have stifled your success seem to disappear on their own. Be ready to receive it. The windows of opportunity will open wide. Accept the blessings given to you now and don't forget to share them. So this is about humility. I feel like um, for the protection message, just be powerful enough to remain humble, right? Know that you're powerful enough that you can remain humble. I feel like you're about to lead by example and your silence is pretty much going to be deafening and your actions are going to be the things that speak a thousand words to other people because there's something about like demonstrating who you are and showing others who they have become type of energy okay but like i'm seeing like somebody show a mirror to somebody else's face um but yeah you no longer have to do things the way that you once did and in a way you have hit rock bottom and what's required now is nothing less than total surrender you will be blessed okay so again a lot of you feel like this situation is kind of like at least when it comes to the relationship i feel like the um foundation has been totally compromised that's the type of energy that i get um let me go ahead and take a look at a shaman's dream oracle message as well because we had lo lo loads of those uh messages come through and uh we also had car brands show up in that in that dream which is about possible future doorways your belief systems and what direction is the best way to move and what option is going to be most rewarding for you guys okay we have horned cactus resourcefulness so there's some kind of herald of change, right? There's some kind of change that's about to happen. When this shows up in autumn, um, there is some kind of releasing that's going to be happening for you guys so that you can make way for a new season. Resourcefulness and Horned Cactus is knowing that, again, I feel like this is almost protective spikes when it comes to the external realm. Um to protect like your innocence especially when it comes to like your soul wanting to kind of explore what else could be out there for you and this is knowing that if there's a will there is a way even when it seems like you're in a dry barren desert and there's like nothing externally um there is this underground network that you guys are connected to that is going to be able to continuously rejuvenate you i'm hearing like a golden elixir so there's some kind of internal elixir right this is almost like your own creative life force that's going to regenerate you in some way even when it seems like nothing else is going on so the cactus thrives in a barren um desert offering you the gift of water when all appears to be dry okay so um it's natural thorns protect predators and elements what you don't see is the deep roots that extend far into the earth filling it with continuous flows of water um this succulent is a symbol of resistance, resilience, resourcefulness, and your needs being met in spite of appearances to the contrary. Okay, so this is moving past the less than friendly surface that hides a rich underground world. And again, this is almost like the water underground, right? The desert is a mystical place filled with mysterious creatures beautifully adapted to their environments. So I feel like, again, you're about to be met with greener pastures, but first you must acknowledge your inner strength and fortitude as you're tested here. Be the cactus resilient and resourceful, okay? So there's something about you guys staying resilient, again, knowing that you guys are blessed in more than one way. Um, I'm just going to do a quick overlay, all right? Um, because I feel like that was a lot. 
with the tower we have this at the base and we have the seven of wands here as well at the top so again i feel like you're protecting yourself after a sudden point of divergence again some of you have suddenly had to like cut off people i kind of get that vibe some of you could have been receiving a calling in regards to this We have the hermit. So again, you could have been isolated. Okay. A lot of you are being isolated in some way, one way or another. So that you can really gain some kind of introspection, gather up that wisdom from your past experiences. Ace of Swords, again, it's like you now have clarity, right? You're now seeing things crystal clear in ways that you once weren't, weren't able to before. You know, you even have the Fibonacci sequence, which is literally the Nautilus. That's literally the Nautilus symbol. So again, I feel like you're, you're seeing this repeated pattern. It's like this repetitive feedback loop. And it's like you're coming back to yourself after each experience deeper and deeper. And you're realizing, because it's a round and round card with the Oracle message. Um, maybe I should read the round and round, actually. I'm definitely being guided to you because the round and round, I put it literally right underneath clean it up. So yeah, there's something, again, you're cleaning up when it comes to these cycles that I've gone round and round. Let me read this one for you because this is literally what this reading is about and the Fibonacci sequence is literally coming up again. Um, So let's take a look at 25. This is the main warning, I feel like, for you guys, especially coming up to November. Um, the spiral quality of events when a lesson isn't quite integrated cycles, you are challenged to break, revisiting a pattern from a new perspective. The appearance of this card is a symbol that although it may appear that you've gone backwards, the truth is, is that you're standing at a higher level looking down on your circumstances, which is what we talked about, right? You will learn something different, do something better and break up a cycle that has been set up in the past. Again, some of you, this is just ancestral things that you've kind of um, inherited. You actually have a bird's eye view on your initial footprints and you can access the wisdom and lessons learned. In relationships, are you wondering how did I get here again? Does something feel familiar to you right now in your dynamics with others? Maybe a little too familiar. Don't be surprised that you found yourself repeating an old story with the same sort of person who may not look similar, but who you attracted to you because of your easy acquaintance with his or her qualities. Your relationship is a mix of what is good and what is potentially challenging. You've drawn this person through the perfection of spirit's plan for your evolution. You may have circled back to an accustomed spot, a familiar place, and that's fine. You get to do things again, only differently this time. For you learned something of great value since the last time around. How will you choose to behave now that you're aware? Remain curious and stay out of the blame game, okay? So really, again, this is knowing that you can break the cycle, okay? You guys need to watch that reading if you haven't already. Maybe some of you need to like refresh your memory on that. But there's something about breaking the cycle around, I almost get like a three of cups energy reversed where it's like you don't fit in and people may talk about you. Yeah, we have the devil, right? And it's really, people may be even obsessed about talking about you, you know? It's that type of energy. Again, the devil tries to keep you in a cage, it tries to keep you in a box, tells you what the right things are to do, um, tries to, again, make you feel insignificant or small, I'm hearing inferior, um, but it's just like a front they put up because it's in a parasitic state, right? It's um, something that wish wishes to kind of siphon energy from those externally around it. Um, so I just get that energy, again, it's infertile, it's, it has an inability to actually create things that it needs. The only way that it can do that is by, again, siphoning the energy from Ariel, right? She had no powers uh, to possess. And actually that reminds me of the Vanessa energy. Before we close out, I completely forgot I needed to mention this. So with Vanessa, she shapeshifts. That's who she kind of became upon the surface. Um, and her occupation was being a saboteur or imposter. And um, the name of Vanessa is derived from the Latin word vanitas, which means vanity, worthlessness, emptiness, and nothingness. So again, this person could have been a really great actress for you guys, right? Or actor, their abilities could have been kind of like to hypnotize you or others and giving off a certain impression. Um, but yeah, there's just something around that. Like, again, it really just comes from these people. Again, it's not, not putting people in the blame game. It's just understanding and accepting the pain of consciousness that it may be operating on, right? And why they could be kind of like talking about you in that way. Um, you know, saying things, especially when you're not in the room, even in front of you, I'm hearing like talking in third person. It's just that type of energy. Just know that it tells you again more about who they are, okay? And um, it's something about like um, their reflect, their like other people's, your reflection of their reflection 
they're showing you who they are by how they respond to you and your response to them is an awareness of you okay it's that type of energy like people's reflection of you is going to be tainted by their own perception right and because you have perspective on the whole matter right you're realizing what part this person has played into your life okay so that's all i really have to say for this reading i think we're going to close out we do have beware of delusion at the base okay so again like with the dragon energy it's just like being aware that literally like being self-reliant that's your message self-reliance it's just being aware okay um angel whispers the time has come to rely on your knowledge your wisdom and your ambition you have an important soul mission and life purpose leaning on your inner strength will allow more of your path to unfold ahead your affirmation is as i take leadership on my life my life brings a flow of good fortune and good blessings self-reliance 7, 7 17 17 mirroring okay one two three four persistence at the base things falling into alignment as you do that keep going you have completed a task that is in alignment with your soul's journey the divine is letting you know that it sees you and that all your persistence is paying off you are being acknowledged the affirmation is i take steps to stay in alignment with my soul's journey and reap the rewards of my persistence because again after this life like when the human condition lifts you really see that pettiness and you know day-to-day -day trivial matters that one seems so big really they don't mean anything on the other side right all, all that matters is walking the way that you wanted to be remembered right and i feel like you guys are doing that with integrity so aquarius i'm gonna go ahead and love and leave you right there i really hope that this reading brought you all the clarification and insight that you guys needed um if you're not already subscribed to this channel do consider subscribing personal reading details are also down below if you guys have been here you know exactly what i'm doing right now okay you know exactly what i'm doing so your closing out message is empathy. How freaking fitting. I am open to seeing both sides of the situation. Exactly what we've been talking about. And that's what you need to do, okay? I'll read a little bit of this for you guys and then we'll go, all right? I just, I love you guys too much. What can I say, right? I want to let you go. <laughs> all right, empathy. Okay, so I'm open to seeing both sides of a situation. You don't truly understand others' motivations if you haven't lived life in their shoes and seen the world through their eyes. It's so easy to judge another's behaviours matched up against your own and label it as right or wrong. But you're missing an important part of the equation, the other person's history and personal path. We're all sparks of the divine with a purpose here in the physical dimension and we can all exert our free will. Some of us have lost our way along the path to love and it is human reaction to judge others before examining their journey through their eyes and with compassion your job is not to judge your job is to love and understand right doesn't excuse anyone's behaviors but extending compassion to those people that don't deserve it because it is those people that need it the most and transcending all judgment and returning back to love because that is the infinite creator state okay so i wish you guys the very best of luck until next time bye